All right, I think we've kept the good people waiting long enough. What's going on this morning? Vishwans27 here for Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide. Uh, I'm joined today by Langsian. What's up, Langsian? How are we doing? I'm doing fantastic, Schwanz. How are you today, buddy? Uh, perfect. Let me crank you up a little bit. I turned you down before when we were having a chat. Okay. Oh. So first and foremost, let's talk about the Kefka Grand Prix Deluxe. So that's the event that just recently got announced. Registration is still open until July 21st, so that's for the next three or so weeks. So in order to register, hit up our Discord and use the fancy schmancy Kefka bot that was just programmed by the one and only Double Down in order to register. Then we have eight weeks of the main heat, and then we have the Championship Cup, and might I add, the greatest lower bracket name of all time, <laughs> the Fallen Run, <laughs> for the last two weeks to close out September. Which means for all of you Ultras League Octopus fans, uh, we probably won't get that back until November-ish time frame. So um, that's just, you know, looking ahead even further to Season 7. Because we're going to be talking about Season 6 of Ultras League a little bit this morning with what we're what we're doing. So first and foremost, Langston, you're looking forward to the uh, the new event that's coming out. Oh my god, I'm super excited! I like the like the little like uh the little change up between ultra seeds. You get a little little flair to your uh, to your seeds, so I'm excited for a little more challenge. It's gonna be a lot, a lot more fun. It'll be a ton of fun. Yeah, it's 29 pieces of flair and a smile. <laughs> um, that's a that's a great reference. Anyway, oh, oh I um, love it. So yeah, what are we doing this morning? Actually, so <clears throat> we're going back to Ultra League season uh, season six here. And what we're going to be doing, uh, as I'm scrolling my little notes pad up and down here, we're doing sort of a mentor thing. Now, if you would like, in the beginner house of our Discord, there are some pinned links for you to submit either a, a video to be reviewed or to ask for a live mentor session. And we're kind of doing both here at the same time. Um, <laughs> which is oh, yeah. which is pretty cool. Uh, there is a question in the chat about the KGP. How much is the registration fee? It's absolutely free. All you have to do is take uh, your sanity by joining Discord and uh, just throw it out the window. That's all. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. So we're doing a, a, a mentor slash live session VOD review thing here. So Langsian uh, gave this video to review it is his week six run of ultra sleek um it was week six i believe and we'll see sort of how we get on and you'll see on the right hand side of the screen these are sort of my notes i went through and i reviewed this already beforehand and wrote down a bunch of stuff so you already see that we're going to start off with um with three different characters here with uh sabin and shadow and setzer so we'll mark that down here right away. Um, I'll get the video started. Um, you are talking during this VOD, so I don't know if the game sound will be a good idea or not, because then you might hear yourself twice, which I don't know about you, but I don't even like to hear myself once. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your, I guess, strategy for, for Ultra League is here we're, we're getting started. Uh, something I've planned on doing is like, obviously I usually check my characters first before sure, I leave sure. the, the airship, right? But I'm um, just getting an idea of like, if I have a pretty high power, like getting an idea of the level of power I have on my characters and then trying to scale once or twice to gain appropriate experience and then find some grind fights. Um, I've been really, really happy with if it's not a place like Sabin where he gives you a, a grind fight check to, to take a couple of my own outside of like a Narsh or things like that, just to get just to get ahead of scaling and then try to like press that advantage the whole way is kind of where I start my early game. All right, um, this will be interesting because I don't think I put both of these things up at the same time. This is fun. oh, okay. Bear with me here while I figure this out. Something else. Well, the good part of this is that the the start of any Ultra League seed is just like six to eight minutes of looting and uh, generally muttering to myself uh, about random little items I find half the time. All right, so we're going to ding you right off the bat here. The first thing I noticed is that you didn't check your characters before you just went to 
um, returner's hideout. Is that something you normally do? You just go it's, ahead it's, and... It's, I always check on the airship. <laughs> I always check on the airship. I okay. it, this is like a. I think I even say in the um. I'm already like. Uh, in the video, I'm like, ah, I should have checked my characters. Um, <laughs> like as I'm driving, it's like it's like what am I doing? Yeah, um, I think you just said I'm already screwing this whole thing up. So I like to check <laughs> my characters on the airship before I even start going anywhere, um, right? And that's just because my looting route can be non-standard. Like, I might go here to Colingen first, and mm -hmm. that's sort of what you did there. Um, but then yeah. also, um, it allows you to, you know, go elsewhere if you need to go elsewhere mm. kind of thing, mm. right? Like, this, right, sometimes that. if I start with Locke, let's say, for yeah, instance, I, I might just that. go straight to Locke's check instead of stopping at returner's hideout or whatever first right so yeah like as i as i have played more i have like I, like for most of ultra league i did a very standard route of like the same two or three places but you're seeing like like actually me going to shadows here and like thinking about colingen i'm starting to like get into the hey i can replace returner's hideout with x but i like haven't quite gotten there like yeah, to make those enough. decisions yet and like value it correctly because i just like so much so many items to sell um but it's it's definitely a good idea to like get more information than less right off the bat, right? Yeah, so whenever I fire up a seed, I take a stock of my party and my party will dictate sort of what I'm looking for. So I kind of have this list here in my head, obviously, of we have Shadow with Slots, Sabin with Magitek, and Setzer with Steel. So we have mm -hmm. two of our three characters already that have magical abilities. So the things you're looking for with Magitek, obviously you want Celeste. <laughs> that yeah, would be right, nice, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice to have. You want earrings and magic power plus gear. And then for Setzer, since his ability sucks, and I know he could use fixed dice and offering, I'm sort of looking for that implicitly when I find it kind of deal, right? So that means more monster in a box checks than normal. And then I list mm. here my free checks. You said you tend to take a couple of those free checks. We I'll did if, already if hit up uh, Colingen. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, Gal uh, Manor for that force yeah. armor, right? Mm. And That's good. Uh, so here's a nice play. You see a white dress in a shop, and you buy two of them because magic white dresses are magic power plus five. So yeah. that's really good, and they're usually really cheap. Oh, and you I, say, yeah. why did I buy that Hawkeye? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not a bad weapon early on, but nobody can use it. So yeah, you, yeah, you just, you just that was a bad investment. Um, yeah, sir? <laughs> I've been a little I was so desperately I trying to find something for Setzer to do uh -huh. that, like I'm just like, oh, that's great, a Hawkeye, he could do it, and I'm like, oh, he can never equip anything. That's what am I doing? <laughs> so pr pretty, pretty brutal. And I say it, I think I'm immediately sure after I click the A button. So it's like, God, it's, uh, yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's fine. But I did, I did like, you know. Again, we're looking for magic power plus gear. We're looking for earrings. So buying those white dresses is really good because they're only like 2,000 bucks and they give you plus five magic power, which is great to have early on. Um, so then I also list out here, you know, my early checks with grind fights to figure out where we're going to go. And then I have these other things in the back of my mind, which checks I could peek and which ones I can't peek, right? Because for me... I usually go to checks based on what their attributes then, are. Um, like, how long is this check? What can it give me? Is there a boss at the end? Shadow? Can I peek it or not? So it Those are sort really of the things that I'm thinking about. Um, now, it, you said this run ahead, was a little like bit... A your, your philosophy was slightly like different? Um, um, it, it's kind of like I'm coming in... I was kind of coming into my own mm -hmm. in yeah, terms of, like... Hyper I really wanted to, like, manage my scaling well early on especially with the the good magic but i also like because i had these these three characters right and i have um a lot i had several uh i guess several seeds i went to check get went to skip that i was able to like i i have i think 12 checks right on the board here that i was like if i may not want to deviate when i get a different character to jump around so i said i might as well just get all of my checks that are close to each other check them as efficiently as possible like so like that's why i ended up doing phantom frame right like so doing that that was my philosophy here um but i do find that it's it, an interesting piece is that you 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 put like daryl's tomb as like peekable and yes. it's something i i don't think i've ever noped out of because i i get into this this rhythm where like i've already done most of daryl's tomb i might as well right do the boss but i do this might as well do this 
And I think that's like a sunk cost for a lot of the things that I do, especially like my late game looting. But that's there's some items something here, different, I guess. I guess. Like, yeah, I, yeah. So the weird mumbling mean, is uh, from the vod because Langston is talking a lot during <laughs> during this, which is actually really good for me as a reviewer of said vod. Uh, you also notice some ice rods here, and you buy one, which is great. If I have enough money to buy a rod, I always will. Now, there were Magus hats here that you did not buy, but there were Mirage vests, which you said, yeah, I want. Yes, give could, me, please. Which could is, anyone equip uh, those Magus hats? Uh, I don't know. Let's go back. I, I don't yeah. think they could, which was the... Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. So this is this is my bad. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, I do snap over it very quickly, so it's like... Yes, so you're absolutely yeah, right. Nobody could. But if one those. could, then that is where, you know, I would uh -huh. want to Bring buy stuff. one of those, obviously. Uh -huh. Because that is really good. Yeah. I, I don't know how much magic they give, but I know it's a lot for your buck. And I think... Oh, whoa. And... Yeah, okay, so... <laughs> way too many consumables just way yes. too many so oh, if, yeah. you, if you use like more than uh, i mean i one more use sleeping bags pretty scale, huh? like uh lackadaisically oh nice mm -hmm. dragon horn um mm -hmm. so i don't use them very often and i buy 10 too. and i find that's more than enough that. for me for the seed if, if you use more of them than maybe 20 but 40 is way too much uh, as a bit of a shout out to like Double Down, he wrote a guide on the wiki about this, and I think at work I was just musing it, and I realized he, I think he wrote something about consumables, and he was like, yeah, 20 is like an excessive amount of sleeping bags if you want to buy them, and I was like, wow, I buy a lot of those. So like, I've been trying to like curtail my sleeping bag usage. Like, I was like, I could I could just be better, right? Like, I could just not use them as much. Like, do I need to fully heal tomorrow every time like Realm uses magic? Probably not. Right. So, yeah. yeah, so I think you're, you're 40 is a lot. 40 is, <laughs> very tired. 40 is you're a very, lot. Very tired during my seeds. <laughs> Buying the shurikens, though, early is really good, just in case you run into a throw user and they're cheap. So we'll, we'll do one compliment. We'll do one critique. Thank you. you know, Thank you. Thank sort you. of the sandwich yeah. here. So 25000 mm -hmm. for that Esper. Um, as we mentioned earlier, so I forgot about this when I wrote my notes, as you... Now find your goon boots in a shop to go with that dragon horn. So yes, you're gonna buy it. Oh no, you already have them. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I think this is just selling stuff to get the the esper now. Uh, I think so too. Yeah. Um. All right. So slots I like early on because it's good AOE attack and Magitek is good because you have access to basically the three elemental spells and their magic power is about what a level two Some spell would be. So, is it okay to increase the scaling and still be fine? I said yeah, because we've got access to some pretty good skills early on, just even with two out of your three characters. Now, mm -hmm. we have to figure out what they're going to do at the end of the game. If we don't find Celeste, then Magitek is kind of meh, and slots will be good until, you know, maybe three or four checks into the game. I'm so, we've got to figure out what to do, and we've got an ad here. Lovely. So let's just give you all the money. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yes. Awesome. All right. So oh. we're going to go ahead and, and mute that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So that's sort of, you know, what what I'm thinking here in the early game is how, how much can I scale up the enemies? Because mm -hmm. even though the enemies get harder, you also get more XP when you beat them. Right? Yeah. So it's sort of like this rubber band kind of effect where... Yeah, your your fights may take a little bit longer, but you're only going to have to take one of them as opposed to like three or four. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm totally fine with you know cranking up the difficulty a little bit because you have access to magic early, which is really really powerful. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I was thinking here is like like because I found white dresses and earrings that like because like seven isn't a very good magic user at all right so this actually lets him be kind of useful but i was like kind of scared as to what my end game looked like here yeah well sometimes you have to go ahead and continue searching and then other times the seed will just give you stuff and you never really know what type of seed you're on the, until uh, you're like do the doing it kind there. of thing right so mm -hmm. i like to just say okay i have got enough for the early game i'm gonna worry about later as we go because you might pull out an Esper with some really good spells on it. 
We might find a dead check that has a really big beefy sword that you're going to want to use. So that's one of the things where, you know, early game, if you've got something to get you through, you can check back in mid-game, hey, um, you know, what the heck am I doing <laughs> for the end of the game, right? Yeah. Emergency rods. Because you're just going to end up with oh the ability God. to kill some dragons and get dead checks, right? So like you said, it's like nice to have that ability to like, then, just like loot farther. Oh, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, you know, out of my list here, I usually like to go to checks with early grind fights. If this list is empty, then I might take off the Moogle charm and do it while I'm mm -hmm. looting South Figaro Basement or somewhere else. But you have Imperial Camp, and I kind of wrote in my notes here, you know, we're good for early and mid game. What's our long term plan? We have no idea. The two espers we got are absolute garbage. Um, but that might change depending upon what the seed gives us. And sometimes you have to look for it in shops and in loot. And sometimes the seed will just give it to you. And I tend to err towards more towards just go and let the seed give it to you. And if, then if you don't find it, then start doing more shopping and looting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. All right, and we've got another character here, which is great. And we've got Boots and Horn, which is great, because Mog can equip lances all the time, most of the time. Yeah, for most seeds, yeah. We just have to find but... said lances. And you got a lot of Bahamut summons in this Imperial camp. I might need to make the the te the, the pupil become the, <laughs> the teacher good. here. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah th this is uh, not a usual round of slots for me. This was a, very, a fairly good slot day. <laughs> for, uh, th th this changed my perspective on slots this seed itself so it's like i love it usually it's a seven flush logomorph disaster sometimes but yeah i mean seven uh, flush is still pretty good because it's non-elemental right and it attacks everything mm -hmm. on the screen no matter what. yeah um, yeah it's, it's, so, someone did a slots video and which helped me a lot with this because i had a seed where I, I tried using slots and i failed miserably mm -hmm. and it's like I, once you get the cadence down it's it's pretty um it's pretty reliable. Yeah, I find it is very rhythm based, right? Yeah, where yeah. where if you hit the A button in like a certain rhythmic succession, oh God. then you will get the the, the slot that you desire. Um, oh, so yeah, here's yeah, Bahamut. I probably would have just ran away from this fight because it's a side attack, but whatever, we're just gonna lay waste to this entire thing. If yeah, we, if, we, if we had good good magic to learn, then fine. I'm okay with Maybe taking it, but ahead. you know, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. I um, I also a, a a blind spot for me is like so. You identify that that doesn't give any experience, mm -hmm. and to me, I saw the Joker, and I'm thinking the Rain Man from the uh, Vector area, and I was like, oh, fine, perfect, but that that's a level magic and doesn't yeah. give you an experience, and I, and I didn't identify that. I'm just like, oh, whatever, man. I'll Bahamut him to death. So. Hey, I'm gonna do the thing All right, so we got Health Mog, and then you go to Phantom Train. So we kind of talked about this, I think, right before we started. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't really like doing this now, because this is a peekable check, and I tend to save those towards much, much later in the uh, mm -hmm. in the seed. Uh, we have so many other options here. but Good ones, too. <laughs> yeah, if, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if um, we wanted levels, then Floating Continent or Moogle Defense are way more appealing, even though, you know... Moogle Defense is definitely another one that you could peek, right? But I think I would have went to the Floating Continent here, I need to do but I, I understand you were having a discussion about this check, and that's why you were, you yeah, were like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so, so what I said to you was like that, um, like, I was told that, like, it was like a different point of view, where I always treated this as a, a peekable check at at last Different checks and then someone was telling me hey you know sometimes you can just like group it in with the rest of the checks they're all over mm -hmm. there so i said oh i was like, i have a lot of checks maybe i'm gonna get the skip at some point so i might as well just just go for it right um just trying some things out um i'm Your not in love <laughs> yeah i'm not in love with this check even though i do get like crazily rewarded for it yes i don't i still don't agree that this is where i should have gone yeah is is my my thought as well like i i probably would have done baron falls into a floating continent would probably be the, yeah. the thing I think. Just it's a it's a free boss right there. Um, and the only reason I would have done Baron Falls is because I have a pearl rod and I have an ice rod on me because slots does it really very good at killing anything, boss related, right? So right, yeah. And, and uh, you know, Phantom Train is good if you want levels because you have this one forced fight and you could also 
run up, walk up to a ghost and say, fight me, bro. And <laughs> there is a monster in a box here, which, which, you I know, skip. like I said, we, we do want an offering and fixed dice for Setzer, but we don't have that fixed dice yet, right? So mm -hmm. it's one of those uh, things where I, I, I mean, I don't really love doing this now, but I'm totally okay, I guess, with, hey, it's, it's a close check that's over here. For me, proximity matters less than the attributes of the check, right? The more time you're in the airship, the less time you are doing stuff, and, and I understand that, but that is the smallest part of what the check attributes that, that are. Because it's, uh... Yeah, and also I think you're right on the idea that th this check, you, how much time you're saving if you just don't do this check at all? And this this is nuts. This is so stupid. Yeah, that <laughs> that is a chest that I, I don't know a lot of people check, but... Yeah, you, you pulled the Illumina out of there. And Mog was unfortunately the only one that could use it, which kind of was not what you wanted, because you wanted the I... Setzer to do that, and now you have to figure out what the hell is Setzer going to do. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's crazy. It's like, that's so, so I, a common thing that's is so once, I beca like, once I'm in my that's comfort so zone, I do the same thing every time. I should not have been able to just walk You, you can tell that this is not a comfortable check for me. Chest, early on because i checked that chest like i, like, I don't know why like, i don't know where the save point is i don't know what car i'm going to i'm just yeah. walking around i'm using 40 sleeping bags nothing happened to these characters and i'm using sleeping bags it's a disaster it's like, it's like i'm just doing do stuff early. like <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, so I, I, another another interesting like, thing like is uh, the phantom checks. train is always right. a back attack so what i do is mm, i re-row my characters at that save point if i'm yeah. doing this which is mm. You know, it's so just good. an interesting tidbit to do. Yeah, it's such a good idea. Like, cause if, if this is a bad boss, he could just beat me d to death here, right? So it's like, right. and you want to be able to get good attacks. I mean, the Illumina being what it is, I get to do whatever I want here, but... Yeah. Um, so there was also a question that you posed, I think, during this fight. You're like, hey, maybe I should just jump with the Illumina. No, terrible idea. Bad idea. Okay. You, um, you do more damage with fight than jump. So the Illumina will do two times the damage if you have MP, basically, to mm -hmm. spare. Um, so that is basically, it's attack times two. And jump essentially takes two turns, right? Because it'll take one right. turn to jump and then the next turn to come down. So you could do four times the damage with an Illumina. Whereas with jump with a dragon horn, you can only do at maximum four jumps right so you're doing less damage overall if you're jumping with a dragon horn than you would with an illumina well, and it up. just fight and you also can only have That's one crazy. chance at proccing pearl versus if you use the fight command two times in a row you have two chances to proc pearl so all together bad jumping, idea jumping, don't jump yeah illumina. Like same thing with the ragnarok don't do it just don't. yeah that's it's funny because I, I just like i can Ooh. never think of it Lost a little bit of stuff there, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Yeah, I. Oh, I have look. so many oh. screens open, and they all have to be, quote unquote, on the active window. So oh, if I, I accidentally minimize something, it just pauses everything. I, I feel like you're disaster. just like <laughs> one of these hackers, like you see in a movie. There's just like 14 screens around you, and you're just like touching them all at the same time. So like, pretty much. Those checkers, <laughs> all right. But, so here is Baron Falls. So again, this is where I probably would have gone. Because you do get the, the free heal after Imperial Camp, so you don't need... So you need sleeping bags less than you think you need sleeping bags, right? Because you get the free heal here. Then if you go to the Floating Continent, you get the free heal before the first save point. You know, so you get a lot of heals just through the nature of playing the game that you don't necessarily yep. realize either. Yeah, I also did... I thought you got the free heal after you did this fight. Uh, mm -hmm. getting it before is so good. Yeah. Um, you're going to notice I can't stop getting Choco Bop now. So yeah. even though I know <laughs> I cannot hit this all stress with it, he just, I just continue to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, God. It's... Yeah. I need, I need to so Choco Bop is a slot that will miss floating targets. And for whatever reason, <laughs> they consider Ultros a floating target. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, I, I don't, I don't really know why. Um, there's a lot of floating things in, in, Final Fantasy VI that shouldn't be. It's very odd. It's very yeah, it makes. And if you want to watch it... The Bachelorette, this is not the right stream to be in. <laughs> We're not doing a Bachelorette reaction today. No. Uh, that, that, that's the next stream. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
uh, but it's like uh, it's well, I I would guess like if if Ultros One was a floating enemy, I could understand it. Maybe Ultros Four. Big fan of that, but like I don't know what's going on here. But I guess that's what makes the sniper so good, right? Yeah, that that's absolutely correct. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though the sniper you wouldn't think would be that good, it ends up being very very good. I've mm -hmm. got this guy just doing I need to find something for him to be doing. Um, but yeah, so at this point, right? Let's just take a step out again we have an illumina for mog so he's set for the rest of the game and even if we find another character like hopefully terra or celeste or edgar or Locke, then we could pivot the illumina to them and then maybe mog can go back to his potential boots and horn and big lance kind of yeah. thing but we have one viable end game build now we are still just going through checks, looking for more of them. And that could be in the form of, hey, there's good magic that I found. Or, you know, you might find another sharp stick at the end of a uh, the end of a check yeah. somewhere. So we'll see what happens. And this is another Esper. Yeah, and a, and a really good one. Um, but so I think something that's going to help, that's helping me here, even like just your frame of reference, um, is that you're already thinking 10 minutes in hey what are my what are my three end game builds going to be for the lanes i'm running mm -hmm. which is like which is like such an interesting thing to like the way to think about it like i'm thinking about how am i getting the seed off the ground where you're like already like hey i'm in kafka's tower what are we doing <laughs> so, yeah well, it's like well, the sooner that you can mark like a character quote unquote done the less you have to think about it there's a lot of thinking that goes on in this game and yeah. the amount of time that you could reduce the amount of thinking that you have to do is just way better. Yeah. If anyone watches me do this, like, I'm mumbling to myself a lot, being like, I'm like, I'm not sure if this is very good. Like, I just, like, questioning myself a lot. But, like, <laughs> mostly, mostly it's information I don't have. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I'll do this because of this, but who oh, knows? Just did, uh, so this is, uh, try to get the Esper to I the used to love this check, I wanted. This but it's, nice. it feel like, how do you feel about Floated Continent as a, as a whole? Because, like, I love it in a situation like this. You get free levels, you get, the, but it's so long. Yeah, it's about ten minutes or so uh, long. Um, but you get two pieces of progression, right? And at the at the state that you have now, so that would right? Ideal. What are you looking for? You're looking for characters that could use the Illumina, or other characters that could, sets are right now is completely useless. And I forgot to yes. mark off that you have Mog, right? Locked. So yeah. we want to replace him with somebody who is not useless as soon as possible. And Floating Continent offers two different places of guaranteed progression. So that usually means that a character can be there. There's a lot less checks in Worlds Collide that offer characters versus offer espers. So a lot of experience if you need so another character, go to a place that is, is character esper only because the they're more likely to have your your character than Ancient not castle, I think. right um, um and then as for floating continent um, itself if i have shadow early i'm doing this either right away because there are these grind fights on the way to the boss master, and since you found rods i wouldn't be that afraid of the first or second boss here but mm. i could understand the hesitation right <laughs> or i uh, do this as soon as i am kind of off the ground a little bit as you mentioned i i never i i think i don't that. ever treat the fights here like grind fights to me unless it's like a mid-game boost because mm -hmm. i i think i think that's hindsight because i think i've been beat up a few too many times by like a goddess or like a magic it's like always like a fight that i just get walled on uh with this group i probably would have been fine with rods but I think I'm always just a little with other checks available to me. I was like, oh, I'll do those first and then I'll come up here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is terrifying because like getting hit by like a doom gaze or something like that up here is like so bad. Yeah. Well, even this boss could have been very difficult for you. But yeah, if we through. weren't. Yeah. Um, because I noticed like I think during the Ultros fight at Baron Falls that my characters just aren't doing as much damage as close to. Uh, compared to scaling as i'd like them to be yeah. i also ice beam this guy for no discernible reason yeah well i mean his name is inferno so I, yeah you went you went with the uh, the obvious play but yeah so <laughs> ultros is weak against fire inferno is weak against lightning um, yes you obviously know that now but just, yeah, yeah. just just for the people in the cheap seats uh yeah <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, this is like a good learning experience where it's like, I don't know. I, after, I think after this at some point, I got so tired of like casting fire on Rexol that like, I was just like, I need to, I looked at the chart. I was like, I need to figure this out. This is insane. <laughs> Most of the time you can just look and tell, but there are there are times like this when it's not not as obvious there. Yeah, well some of these bosses have their names are numbered, so it's like come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna kill you with sixes. Blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so here is yeah. an Esper. Let's crank you up there. Yeah. Still I, still I, trash. So you still haven't found I mean Siren I think... has magic power plus one and you correctly just said, okay, we're going to leave that on Sabin and let him cook for the rest of the seed. Because if we find Celeste, then we're going to be good with him. Yeah. Um, but we still haven't found any decent espers, so... No. Now, now, <laughs> now I would be thinking alarm bells are starting to go off. Oh, god. Um, you know, we need to maybe do some more looting when we're done with someone Floating Continent to find something. Right? So that's... Yeah. Yeah, because, like, we're finally, we're at a spot where, like, I am, I'm in rough shape for, like, any real boss that comes my way now that I've started scaling Someone things as well. It's so it's, like, rock. I'm a little worried here, I think, I wanna, like, about what I'm going to fight. I think that's the right thing. Okay, there you go. Now you can post that link, Mr. Warkin. Oh, yes. Oh, Maybe God. not. Okay. Get I, blasted. I, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, I, let, let me do it, because I have the power to do it. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? This Come is a good time power. to do it, because I, I'm literally running through Floating Continent. So, um, yeah, like, so, like, I Mem realize... Memorize so, your boss weaknesses. Yeah, literally, Bored at Work, it's a fantastic thing I did the other day, right? It's, like, pulled up all the guides on the wiki, and there's just, like, so much information in there if you're gonna... Oh, yeah. I never... So, so this, this is, I this is a really, never do this. I, I, I like this a lot, actually. Do you really? So I two seeds before this. I, do this I got all Doom, the time. I got Doomgaze twice like at this spot, and he killed me twice. Yeah, and you have to walk all the way back. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, it, I little bit, little bit of PTSD here. It, it takes it takes about ten seconds to do that, and it saves you anything that takes you time to save minutes is yeah. is worth it. The, uh, this is definitely not in the drinks glue style of life here, but I I think <laughs> I I think I'm. Hearing someone else be okay with it, I'm, I'm a little better on it, I think. But yeah, I, I never I, do I, it. I do that all the time. So, all right. So you found an ice shield on the floating continent somewhere. Uh, if this were me, I would be looking to give that to Shadow to learn ice too. Saban doesn't really need it because he has ice beam, which is basically ice too, just a single yeah. target. I like using this pearl rod here. You're like, uh oh, this is a this is a rut row. This is a tough boss. Let me go ahead and do this now and that's fine because it allows you to do that and kill Hayden basically two shots yeah and get through this that gets, fight that gets ugly really quickly that's like the, the the pro rod is like that's like Hayden is the reason I hold a pro rod him and doom gaze oh yeah for generally sure. yeah um and Do doom is also a good candidate for that pro rod yeah he could he could be pretty nasty if you run yeah. into him when you're not ready all right Thank God we have finally found Ice 3. Now we at least are set for for Shadow, but for some reason we're putting it on Setzer Ice instead. Three is gonna be very good. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think I'm so desperate to give him something to do. Yeah. I, I think that this, but that's that's probably a mistake where I should just be making sure Shadow is. Also, Shadow. Because you only need to make three characters good, right? Is that the. And like, and Slot is. Like, in my head, I'm like, oh, Slot's still fine. Slot is not fine at this point, right? Like. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's probably Shadow on the... Uh, I scrolled too much. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So teach that to Shadow and Sabin because Ice 3 will be better than the beams that Sabin has. Because, um, again, each of the beams is basically like a level 2 spell. Um, and Shadow has way more magic power than Setzer does. The, so here is like... I guess this is sort of part of the feel of Worlds Collide, and, and I hate saying it like this because it's not scientific and concrete. Um, you said, you know, we need like three good characters, and technically that's true. You really only need to have three really good characters, and you could have one person sort of just hanging out and helping out when need be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tend to try and cut bait 
earlier with characters that I know are not going to do much for me, right? The only thing that Setzer will be able to do at this point is hold a big sword that we may or may not find, get the fixed dice that we may or may not find, get a spear for that boots and horn that we may or may not Ooh, find. That was right? stupid. So what are we doing? It's one of those things where I am just not going to invest anything into Setzer at all and instead invest all of that time and energy into my other characters that I know are going to be at least sticking around for the 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 medium term and then eventually long term. Mog is staying in the party no matter what because he could use that Illumina, right? And then if we put the magic power plus Esper on Sabin, then he might be able to stick around even if he doesn't get Celeste to cast Ice 3. And then Shadow's yeah. got good enough magic power where Ice 3 can be a viable, you know, end game sort yeah. of build. That makes sense to me, yeah. It's just like... So that I... then that leaves Setzer as the odd person out and why are we bothering with him at all? <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna have another yeah, character yeah, at some point, so it'll be totally right fine. Slot. Like, just to be the scene. So he he's gonna go right. Uh, yeah. Like, you definitely you de you're gonna find two other characters. You know, yeah. so it just depends on who they are. I can I can, I cannot. Yeah. So, so like, save my life. You I know, know I'm, I'm hoping floating continent three gets us attack? our some. our character to replace Setzer, and we'll see what we get at the end of it. If anybody can actually read, they could see what what happens here but um <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like uh up, buddy? At, i don't know it's like as i go it's like i start to like uh, resign him to being like some cure bot essentially i think yeah uh, and, and that's fine and, that, and you can do that for now right you could say well sets for now is just going to heal people but there's no point in teaching him ice three yeah sure it is yeah I uh I cannot get a seven flush to save my life here. This is like <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. It's just it's like I said, it's just rhythm based. Chocobop is gonna miss flying enemies and here we go. There it is. Yeah. I, I am I am usually I don't even look. It's just like a I tap tap more tap. And then like have. that usually works. And right here it's like I had to very consciously find <laughs> the flush. Yeah. Well we still do have an ice rod if you really need to get rid of Mo yeah. up top, but there he goes. Yeah. Uh, sets are continuing to be an incredible waste of time every time he hits a command button, so... I mean, it's fine, because he's... If he was casting magic, I'd be more upset, but he's doing jump and fight, which are very small animation so, times, yeah. so you're not wasting all that much time. And... So at this point, Shadow could have learned Ice 3, and he could be doing that instead of using Chocobop, what seems like every time, right? So well, that's, that's the... After that fight, it's like I see that he learns Ice 3, and it's like, man, if Shadow had Ice 3, he would have blew Mo right up. Like, it would have been very quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so unfortunately, we get yeah, not a character right? there. So at this point, I'm looking for a character um, to get rid of Setzer. Or I need to go loot more and find something for him. Um, mm. So I would tend to go towards Mog's checks because that was the character that you got the most recently, right? Mm. So if I'm looking, do I need another character to replace Setzer? That's sort of where I would look and lean. Um, I think this is because you're like, hey, I, 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 I'm close to Velt Cave, and I think you also said something about like, oh, after this, I'm going to go loot and shop in Thamasa, and I think that that's a good idea too, because like I said, we need something to find for Setzer to do, or get rid of him. Those are your two options, basically. At this point, he's done. Yeah, it's like when I go back to like actually looting stuff here. It's like I think I'm in, I think I'm in bad spots. I don't have anything that would incline me to uh, mid game. I don't know. I don't know. Ice three and Illuminas is pretty like, good though. But I think like, yeah, not having a, a magic I hope this Esper is, a is not that like, like my fight is not my Kafka fight is not going to be very good. No. Or fast. No. I um, mean, I yeah, we have Siren, which will be good for tier two. I don't know if mm -hmm. we saw instant death. We have life three, so calmness is already taken care of, right? Ice three will make fast work of Tiger, but. Down, uh, we still have, you know, most of the other parts to deal with. We don't have fire magic outside of Sabin or bolt magic outside of Sabin, right? So we're still missing a lot of stuff. 
Yeah, and it, my plan is to have a half of my characters wearing a white dress into into tier one. Like they're gonna get beat up pretty that's, bad, so uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> I get so scared of it. Like, like my one of my biggest concerns, I, something I think that I weigh too much, is how I'm gonna handle uh, the medio phase of tier three. Mm -hmm. um, and I constantly, like, I so I put a lot. I think I put a lot of value in like the offering style or quick thing, but I I probably don't need to if depending on how beefy my characters are yeah so we can go over sort of the script of how tier three works when we when we sort of get there at mm -hmm. some point um but I, I don't know maybe i'm in the minority here in chat you could feel free to uh to chime in uh i don't really care about armor <laughs> at all <laughs> um yeah tier one is really the only part that w would worry me and I if can, something I goes fucking, really wrong, uh, you just reset and you just do the, do the that part again. to save my life. Yeah. yeah. And it's the easiest <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I think you're, you're, you're right there. It's like something I think about that probably doesn't need to be in my brain at yeah. all. Like, and, and Medio will do about 1500 damage to all of, to anybody. Yeah. At most. Regardless. Right. Even if you're wearing, man. well, not if you're wearing absolutely nothing, but. If you have a shield and a piece of armor, you'll probably... 1,500 is probably the, the max that it'll top out at there. Yeah. Alright, so um, here's an, yet another Esper. And there's fixed ice in the wall. So now we yeah, have we, something for Setzer to do. Long at last, hallelujah. Setzer can use the boots and the, the horn and the fixed ice. Good. Um, yes. Which is not what you did. <laughs> no, uh, so I, this is pre me knowing that that is a good combination. Yeah. Uh, someone had to tell me that, hey, you would have been way faster if you did that. So I, I don't know. I think I said at the beginning of the seat, I don't know anything about jumping and I don't mm -hmm. jump very much at all. And that's why I like, clearly when I was like, should I put this Illumina on this jumper? You know, like, that's clearly a bad idea, man. Sure, what are you doing? Be here. So, yeah, yeah. So jump is really good with most weapons i would say uh -huh. even with a high battle power weapon you'll still be pretty decent with boots plus horn and boots plus horn plus fixed ice is great um because it allows you to still have the damage of the fixed ice without the animation of throwing the fixed ice right and it does give a um i, I did post in the beginner how somebody asked a question about jump yesterday or whatever there is a algorithms Check FAQ that, uh, document in was. the wiki that I reference all the time because it basically uh -huh. um, has the, the the actual math behind what the heck is going on. Okay. And for jump, if you have a spear, you get um, a 150% damage bonus from jump. If it's just any other weapon, I believe it's just 50% uh, damage increase. So you're doing one and a half times damage with any other weapon, or you're doing two times damage with a spear. And right. that applies to fixed dice. So boots, horn, fixed dice is one and a half times damage. So here I think you just weren't sure and didn't know, and you're like, well, now I learn Ultima, so let's put Ultima on Setzer, which if we have fixed dice and boots and horn, that's our build. We don't need so that. Character, huh? um, yeah. So... I want to just pause it here. <laughs> so there's yeah. something you said. You're like, I need to find a character, huh? And then you did search the skies <laughs> right away, which is co the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, there's no character up here. Yeah, um, there's, there's and, no character here. And I knew this at the time. So I don't know what I'm doing here. So like, maybe <laughs> I'm thinking that I'm getting my last Esper check out of the way and mm -hmm. then I can peek some other things. But then I do a non-peekable check like two checks after this so it's like i don't know man like this is this seems like a blind like this is something i could do if i had my next two checks are both characters and then right. hey i need an esper i check this thing yeah yeah you don't need espers now you need to find your two characters because now that we have ice two and now that we have oh i'm sorry the timer's That's still great. running That's now that great. we have ice two and or not ice two ice three uh, for both sabin and shadow we've got our fixed ice Thing that we're doing with Setzer, and we've got our Lumina for Mog. Our party is pretty set for Kefka at this point, unless we find something ridiculous like a 
like a throw character coming out of the woodwork at some point, right? Um, mm-hmm. So that is that's where my mind sort of goes is well, let's go find our characters now. I could always search the skies is super fast, and if I know I need the Esper, boom, boom, and just and just do it. Yeah, I th- I think here I'm just in such a uh, like from earlier yeah. I'm such a do all the checks next to me and near me right now, mm-hmm. and so I did this check. I was like, oh, it's so like I I planned it once I went down into the cave to get the shadow check. Right, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm gonna do this nice little clean little loop over to here, and like I just didn't deviate it from it all. I just I was like, I'm just gonna do it. No new information, right? So mm-hmm. I didn't use any of the information I got in the last four checks to, <laughs> to do anything, which is which is what I should have done. Oh. Yeah, so you notice that we've got magic power plus two. You put that on Sabin. Really good play there. Sabin's the one that needs the magic power way more than Shadow does. And Shadow's going to learn Ultima, and we're all going to be happy. That's a yeah. Sniz. Yeah, so Sniz. I think part of it is routing on the fly, but right? Is, is being open to being malleable about the information you get. And instead of just blindly just going through things it's good to have a plan but if something happens to you know uh change what your outlook is then you need to be able to deviate from that plan and in collapsing house here i think you went in here to find an offering we don't need it as we mentioned earlier there's a ghost sprite on the outside we don't need we don't need this we need a character right yeah Um, I just I have all of the tools in my box right now and I am not using them. Like I like I am obsessed with trying to find an offering for this thing and I do not need it. Which is yeah. like well, probably why I'm here. Uh, again again, you know, you you said you're not sure about jumping and fixed dice. So that's understandable knowing that now, right? Yeah. We get it. I also get the worst possible I don't know. And yeah, I saw the VDH. Now. I do have steel here, which I could have stolen a Minerva, but uh I just like decided not to. Yeah, you don't. Uh, pretty significant. One, I, I mean, I guess if you're worried about your armor, then fine. I might have they gone for three one things. steel and then nope out kind of thing. You know, kind yeah. of like you did. It's just like I don't need pugs. Let's nope out. Um, <clears throat> so the, so in the chat, uh, Chattius points out mod requires switching worlds. So you only lose like maybe two seconds, three at most, changing worlds, and if the check has better attributes for you and will get you more towards your goal of unlock quicker, you're going to save more than three seconds overall. So by Lanxian going to this check, which he required to fly the airship to, sitting through the cutscene, running through all the people that are annoyingly standing in my goddamn way as I'm trying to get into the house, and then going through the house and doing this for an Esper that you don't need is way more time than it would have took to switch worlds and go to Mog's check. I, I understand proximity is kind of a thing in some other games. Like, I know I play a lot of A Link to the Past randomizer, too. Um, mm-hmm. And proximity is a huge thing in here. How can I clump my checks together to get the most value out of it? Yeah. For me, in Worlds Collide, that's not really a thing. I would rather say, what is the check that I need, and how can I get to it? Yeah, it's, it's funny, because I'm trying to... Um... Like I'm trying to clump these checks so I can like gain little edges while also not using the little edges, like all the sleeping bags and things like that. Like I have other places I could be shaving outside of just like, oh, I'm gonna try to proximity check these things to make that easier, right? So yeah, yeah. All right, so we, we did see that you bought a Ragnarok in World of Ruin to Zen. Oh my God, we finally found a weapon and almost all of our characters can use it. So let's have one of our characters use it. And then you don't use it at all for the rest of the scene. <laughs> yep. I like this is like some, so something I really struggle with is at the end of the seed, like once I have a character be done, I constantly try to make them a little bit better. But like mm-hmm. the gain on them being a little bit better is oh, so bad. Right. Like, like that Ragnarok's a stat stick. Yes. A 50,000 gold stat stick. It's like, <laughs> that like. It didn't. I didn't need it. It didn't need yeah. to do it. He's going to be casting Ultima, and if he's not casting Ultima, Ultima he's going to be casting yeah, history. So. Those are the things he's doing. Well, three. I can understand buying the Ragnarok and giving like it to Sabin maybe at this point, every because every, every check even though he's been getting the magic power plus Espers, he hasn't learned Ice 3 or Ultima yet, right? So he's still going to be doing the beams. 
So I would put the Ragnarok on Sabin and say, all right, well, let's forget about juicing Sabin now. Let's juice, you know, uh, Shadow. Or the Magic Power plus Esper will be good whenever he hits the Flare proc kind of thing. Yeah, and I think the sad part is I don't think Mog could use the Ragnarok, so I couldn't, like, Genji glove it. So it's like, uh, so I think that's why I was like, oh, God damn it. Like, it's just like kind of like, yeah, so more to your point about trying to make things better and better and better and min-max. Um, that's good in, in a general sense, but once you have your set builds, you don't really need to, what I like to call, win more. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you have, for instance, like a, uh, a Genji Glove uh, Valiant Knife, you don't need, or rather, if you have an Offering Valiant Knife, you don't need a Genji Glove Offering Valiant Knife because you're just going to be wasting time with those extra four animations the majority of the time. Uh, yeah. It'll help in the final boss, so definitely do that for the final boss. But for everything else, you're you're just overkilling things. And at that point, you're wasting time instead of gaining time. Yeah. That's, that, that's the balance that I, I find it very, very difficult for me to, to figure out. Like, when to just, like, kind of go at the end of the scene. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can hear I should just be going. Yeah, even before you found the Ragnaroks, you had a good enough party to, to go. Now that you have a Ragnarok, you should be using it with one of your characters for fight, because it's much faster than casting spells or using uh, Magitek. Although for that fight, you kind of had to, because it was... Uh, what you it's the only, the, only, uh, uh, the only source of damage for him was right, that right. and his slots. Yeah, so about this check, Mount Colts, this is not good. Um <laughs> It's not peekable, it's the longest check you have left, and yes, it is the closest technically to Zen after you change worlds, but it is absolutely not where you should have gone. <laughs> you did yeah. get, you did get a, you did get an Esper out of it, so yeah. at this point with eleven Espers, you're thinking probably yeah. skip now. Um, yeah. and you got instant death off of it, which is great, so put that on somebody to learn and I don't know if I that's yeah. that's good. I, I think <clears throat> I, I only think my, my thoughts here were that my last available checks were all in Narsh. Mm -hmm. So that if I clear up the Colts thing, like if, if my character is not here, then it, like I'm, I'm kind of peace of mind getting Colts out of the way because it's on the way. Um, I'm not sure if that's very good because like maybe like the odds are that it's here and I should play those odds as opposed to like cutting off the the back end of Colts, I guess. But right, right. I'll come back to all of this shit out. Yeah, so I, I probably wouldn't have looted in the shed. I mean, but it is fairly quick, so I'm okay with that. And you did find a couple of pieces of armor in there, which is now nice. The red jacket for saving the force armor for, one more for somebody armor. else. Um, but one, more, one more dead check. It's one of those things where I would have went to like, Mog's checks a very check, long yeah. time ago. Um, We'll put me into mm -hmm. when we range, deemed right? sensor as useless we we eventually got lucky and found nice. fixed dice but in a in, in a wall and we got lucky and found the alumina for mog could, but if we didn't sort of get lucky and stumble right. upon those things we'd be in serious trouble which is good uh, yeah <laughs> in terms of what the heck are we going to do to kill things yeah and so like i'm i'm realm is a great character to find way too late in the seed but yeah. Like, so, like, when people say, like, so I hear in, like, the chat, it's like, Google like, Defense it's like immediately. It's like, like an item. I'm not, like, item. wouldn't you the want to do the Kefka check, check so that it pops like, you right into the Moogle Defense matters, and do Moogle yeah. Defense right there? Or, like... Um, I would have peaked Moogle Defense first because you could see whether or not it's a character. And if it's not, you could just completely ignore it. Oh. Yes, it does take a little bit of time on the front end. But then it will save you time on the back end here, right? Because we know, hey... I found Realm here. Now I don't have to go through the entire Moogle defense check at all because it is a rather long check. Okay. That's so, a, yeah, I, yeah I, I think for you, leveraging peekable stuff more is probably something to take away from, you know, what we're doing here, right? Because it'll, yeah, sometimes peekables won't save you time, but generally speaking, they will usually save you in the longer run because then you could just you can literally throw away checks that you don't have to peek and save them for later. Yeah. Okay, and that makes a lot of sense to me. Pause. Okay. We have a, 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 I don't know if there's an ad coming there. I don't know. Thank goodness. No ad. Yeah, so 
Um, the unfortunate thing about this is it's Kafka at Narsh, and I'm pretty sure... Let's see, where was your last character? It was that Esper Mountain. So we don't know what was in Daryl's tomb. It's right here. But There's no reason not if to. this was the, the only thing. character, then you would have ended up here last almost for sure anyway. Unless you went and did Mog's checks as soon as you got him and as soon as you found out, hey, Setzer's useless, right? So Yeah. It's one of those things. Had we known that Setzer was useless way earlier, we would have done this way earlier. We would have had Realm in the party instead of Setzer. How much better would that have been, right? Mm -hmm. it, there's Dumb. all these what if questions. Yeah. I, so, I, is are the odds that you find the character that you're looking for better once you find an additional character? Like, is it more forward placing logic, or is that like? Yeah, that's correct. Not... So, Worlds Collide oh. is deeper than it is wide, right? So, in order for it to be deeper, it needs to place characters underneath characters you just recruited. So if you're looking for another character, chances are they will be at the checks of your most recently recruited character. Now, that mm -hmm. doesn't happen all the time, right? Because it's a randomizer. Um, but that's, it's weighted more towards that way. Okay, that's good to know. All right, and then yeah, we've got our fixed dice yeah, uh, with right. our Genji glove, which again, we should be using boots and horn here, <laughs> yeah. but, but that's fine. It, the 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 true irony of uh, making Setzer kind of useful, and then finding a better character, <laughs> is not lost I... on me. It's just like finally, yeah. Yeah, but th this is what I mean. Sometimes you just have to go, and the seed will give you stuff, right? You found. Granted, this was the second fixed dice here, but had you not done Velt Cave first, right, and you did Mog's checks first. You would have gotten the fixed dice from Lone Wolf, and all of a sudden, hey, Setzer is useful again. Now we have another choice. Who do we swap out for Realm, right? And maybe you swap out Sabin for Realm at that point, because Shadow's got higher magic power. So your party That's composition could have looked totally different if you had done checks in a different order, Let's take a look at Realm right? Here. Yeah, and it's like uh, also something that I realized that uh, that Chatty said. It's like uh, my next character actually okay. wasn't even on. The mog check it was just right. like happened to be where i would find mog and i just like don't use realm here which i'm not sure yeah that's fine yeah uh, because i set, have so, it doesn't really yeah. unless realm had throw and even then i don't know if i would have taken her your your party is set here you have I, you have yeah. your your your, skip. your characters because the thing is right realm might have more magic power than either shadow or sabin but then she's gonna have to learn all those spells all over again and you don't have a lot of time left in this seed because we just need one more character for go mode yeah and i yeah i think like maybe if like i had found <clears throat> if i had already done doma dream maybe because she had sword tech but other than that right. she's not even that strong so, so it's like then i can go to yeah well, the thing with Sword Tech, and is that what it's called? Uh, this is again another topic we talked about in the Beginner House recently, so these are all good, timely things. Um, Sword Tech, you can actually use Sword Tech with a high magic power user if you use Sword Tech 6. Yeah. Or another interesting strategy that I like to employ sometimes Sword Tech 5 not only refills your HP, but it also refills your MP. And yeah, you have a, an Esper that teaches Ultima on it, right? So instead of using oh, Ultima oh. and Osmos or Ultima and Gold Hairpin, you could use Ultima and Sword uh, Tech 5 stuff. and just cast it, you know, over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah, it's basically an elixir, right? It's essentially, yeah. It's, like, yeah, it's very good. You know what I do, right? I, also, I do not think that knowledge was in my repertoire <coughs> here. Well, now you know. Yeah, well, uh, th th this double dice real paying off here. <laughs> just, only well, I mean, the thing with dice yeah, is they ignore defense, around, and fucking, uh, uh, Poltergeist is very, very high physical defense. So the the double dice here is actually good seven, compared right? to if you were, say, swinging the Ragnarok or That's swinging the Illumina, right? You see Mog's not doing a hell heck of a lot of damage here. Yeah, um, he's auto safe. Because, of, yes, that's correct. So. Yeah, okay. Um, Bio is the weakness of Poltergeist, so you'll probably do about the same damage as Ice 3 with half the MP. But mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, because sets are just burninated the whole thing. 
and finally did something. Yeah. yeah. So you know. did get to see that this is not a character when you initiated yeah. Moogle defense, be but Kefka. you can't reset out of it because then that means you'd have to go back to before you did Kefka at Narsh. So that's why if you uh, save uh, outside of Narsh, go peak Moogle defense first, then reset, you only lost the time that you walked from the entrance to Moogle defense. Right? That does make a lot of sense to me, especially and, as a later... Yeah, and as a char and if it's a character, uh, realm you then do not have to even bother going all the way up to Lone Wolf and Kefka. No, I should just do that character's checks, awesome. right? So it sort of pays off much, much better. But yeah, I didn't think that within way. all of that, you did get Kefka Tower skip at least. Yeah, that's uh, clearly what I was going for, right? <laughs> it all works out in the end. Yeah, exactly. So. I think I I don't know what I do with this, but I think I find the aura lance there and check to see who can equip it. Mm -hmm. And still looking for an offering for some reason. So yeah, again, this is the I didn't know about how good boots and horn and fixed dice yep. were. So that's fine. Uh, yeah, uh, there's such a good boots and horn situation here. Yeah. So like, here's across. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dad. I no, I was just, I said just uh, several several different boots and horn setups that I'm not using, on top of like, right, yeah. So so let's think about this. You have boots and horn and aura lance all on the bench. You have a Ragnarok that you're not really mm -hmm. using, right? So even though you've accumulated all of this power, you can't really even use it, right? And that's part of the the problem right? of winning more is you have all this good stuff that you can't really use because you have other stuff that you've substituted in it and that's that's fine that'll happen sometimes but going out of your way and buying the ragnarok or you know going and taking that poltergeist fight and it was really necessary again these are all things that add times to your time force armor yeah okay let's do that all right let's equip your characters here we go yeah i like I think I realized I hadn't like touched anything on these guys in a while, and I know it's that it's gonna be. I don't know why I'm doing this now. It's fine. like you just yeah. get it done. Yeah, like do it so that I think I'm just like getting it ready for the someone to be done after this. But yeah, I'm not well, sure. It's like an all not, not, sure that the, not the going in your menu and better. constantly equipping and unequipping armor just to get slightly better means is is a good thing. So that's. That's something that you did well in this scene, yeah. is you didn't say, oh, I now got a red jacket, let me go equip it immediately. Like, it's it's oh, a man, marginal improvement, cool. right? It's not right. going to help you win a fight more. Whereas, oh, I found an Illumina in a chest. That is going to help you win a fight more. You equip that immediately. We're going to fight this dragon, so yes. we're going to go, I think. Yeah, Alright, uh... so here's your sixth character, and you said you're going to fight a dragon. I'm not quite sure why you do this. Maybe it was, I, like, I want to learn a spell, I don't have enough levels. Because I think level 36 to 38 is wet, good enough for Kefka's Tower, even with the increased scaling that you have, because you have the 12 espers here. Yeah, I thought that I my characters weren't, like, weren't doing enough damage, I don't okay. think. But, I don't, but I'm not, like, also, like, I have one physical attacker here, so it's like, the levels don't really scale into the magic power that much mm -hmm. given what i have so it's like yeah. doing the dragon is like I, I think this is like a a safety thing that i need to drop as like because like i'm at level 38 which is like way bigger like now my, my dragon threshold is like 33 34 now depending uh, right right is like yeah generally so yeah and that's fine i i'm 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 fine with doing that the the extra two levels that the bosses will be in kt are not really that big of a deal so, and here's another thing I really like that you do. You look through the espers and you're like, okay, what spells do I need to learn right now? And you just ignored what the esper bonuses were because you knew you were taking the dragon. So this is a good a good play here. This might be where I was at, where like I knew that I couldn't, I don't think I could remember who had life three and who didn't. Mm -hmm. And so like, I was like, that is something that's going to be, I need to make sure that I still have mute, still have dooms. Someone still has all these spells. Right. Um, and this might be like an easy way for me to like unload this off of my brain to be like, yeah. I have this dragon. I'm gonna get 50 magic points for it. Honestly, yeah, absolutely. Because um, the last thing you want to do is going into the Kafka fight and go, "Crap! I didn't teach anybody Doom. What's wrong?" You know, or my yeah. calmness protection is non-existent. 
Yes. Uh, this is gonna be um, so I think that's it. It's like, so it's probably something I could probably, like, if I had more foresight early on, I could have done that better mm -hmm. and skip the dragon, but... Um, hey, a yeah. targeted ad at me in my area, Hudson Valley yeah, Renegades. Oh, uh, look go. at that. My goodness. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> Listen, you know, we're getting a little peek behind the curtain, the Schwann's you background, you know? There it is. Uh, get, to know, to get, to know your, <laughs> get to know your Ultros League runners, right? There it is. There you go. This is good stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I, there, I, I think your explanation of the dragon here is, is, is fine. I, I just would have said, well, what do my levels look like? I'm just going to go because I'm good enough. Because this is, again, mm -hmm. another like minute, minute and a half and... It depends on if you feel like you're going to get that minute and a half back inside of Kefka's Tower in the Kefka fight, right? Because at this point, you're just trading off time now for time later. Yeah, and I think that uh, I think that you just think something you wrote in your notes later. It's like a shadow of this. It's like I my be like as I am less comfortable in the position that I'm in, I do a lot of weird time wasty stuff, and that's <laughs> this. Like that. Like I just like oh this. I'm I'm. I'm preparing for eventualities that I'm not even sure if I'm calculating, right? Like, I, I don't know how much time this saves, but it's probably not enough for it to matter. So it's like, that's the, like, I'm kind of just like in this like ubiquitous, I'm kind of afraid of this nebulous thing. I'm not afraid of a very specific thing. And that's, <laughs> I should be thinking about the specific thing that I'm afraid of. Yeah, well, because then if you're afraid of a specific thing, then you could sort of plan for it, right? What happens if you run into Magi Master inside of KT? Well, yeah, it's a like, we need to have fixed ice because that's defense ignoring. We need stuff that is non-elemental, so maybe slots. And we're screwed after that, right? So yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's like that's that's just like something you can like think about specifically. Whereas in hopefully one day I'll be better at. Well, hopefully after this I'll be better at. But like this is the thing I'm targeting. All right, so we're going into Kafka's tower. You have Setzer and uh, Setzer and Mog, maybe. Yeah, Setzer and Mog on the left side, Shadow and Realm in the middle, and Yeti and Saban on the right hand side. Um, I, I I hate this, and so do I. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. So uh... in, in Kafka's Tower, right? The bottleneck in Kafka's Tower is going to be this middle path because it's the one that's fighting two bosses versus the other teams are only fighting one. So you're always going to waste more time or spend more time in the middle than you will on the two sides. So put two characters from your final party. It almost doesn't matter who in the middle, right? Um, mm. And then leave one on one side and one on the other sword. side. So that this way you can get through that bottleneck faster. Because two members of your final team are going to kill the two bosses faster than just one. Does that sort yes. of make sense? Uh, this is uh, something that someone yelled at me about very recently. <laughs> was like it was like your someone came to my chat and was like, "Hey, you did that pretty well, but your final team making is really bad." And I was like, "Oh, okay, sounds good." Yeah, uh, yeah. So thank you. No, that that, uh, that that makes sense to just me. Just saying it versus explaining why is yeah, know, yes, yeah. No, so I, I, oh, that makes sense to me. That does. Make oh, sense look, to me. and we do have a Magic Master here. So now. Yeah, this the question is, how do we deal with this, right? And the answer this is very, Ultima and very, Sword Attack. Very, very bad. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. If you would have had two members of your final crew, um, mm -hmm. you might have been able to do Ultima twice or at least crack that remaining ice rod you've got somewhere and then use Ultima. So you probably could have gotten through this fight in one shot um, had you had you know two people in your in your party obviously this is just bad luck because this could have happened on the left side and we would have been saying the same thing oh you know it would have been nice to have two team right but <laughs> yeah it's sort of this 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 happened when it happened kind of thing and now you're yeah. sort of out of luck and yeah now i'm now i'm slotting master <laughs> yeah and also i think to be noted if i was going to do what i did i should have ice treat him first and then Right. Ultimate him. Yep. So that, because I thought that tincture was going to put me over, and it did not. So I got yeah. smoked here. Yep. Uh, oh. But... Um... Yeah. So sword tech using realm using sword tech one or six definitely would have helped you out there, but she she got.
bodied pretty much. That's right gonna away. fuck a lot of people. Um, um, that is really terrifying. So, uh, what do I do? What do, I do? What <laughs> and now yeah, you're trying, I, to, I, trying to think through, you know, what exactly you check are trying characters. to do. If, if someone has berserk, yeah, so I don't actually remember how I get through this. Uh, I think I just do it again. And yeah. Be, yeah, I think I just send it better. More full send. I think yeah, what you just... did is, you, so the adjustment you made was put the gold hairpin That's on so that sure. Shadow can cast it twice without having to re-up. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Um... So, again, you know, middle of the... So, if you're in this situation, and this is for, you know, everybody, Ooh, where you have Magi Master and no Berserk, here's how you should approach this fight. You should know what types of non-elemental damage you have. You should know what types of defense-ignoring damage that you have. And the very first attack, you should throw out your strongest elemental attack. We'll because out. the wall change doesn't take effect until after he gets damaged this? the first turn. Um, so I like also, you know, setting your party up with some ice shields and some red jackets all to right. absorb some of the stuff he's going to throw at you. So this is all good, really good prep work, right, for, for this. Yeah. So, types of non-elemental damage that you have here, Maduin is pretty terrible, so I wouldn't even bother using it. Ugh, but you have God, slots dude, for after terrifying. you have, you know, Ultima twice. You have Sword Tech 1 or 6. We have Fixed Dice, which always hits. That gets around Magic Master's really high physical evade. And it is defense ignoring. And that's pretty much it. That's, that you're, you're stuck with those, you know, couple of things there. Yeah outside of like going outside and changing my entire party right this is like where we're at yeah and you're i mean not that you couldn't do that but you don't have to because you could use this here you yeah, know two ultimas fine. and even even though realm has been you know you got her pretty late but you haven't done anything with her she's still doing three thousand damage with sword tech six which is pretty good <laughs> yes yeah i'm uh, i'm not unhappy about this i also have this pro rod on her actual hand which is like a problem so i need to, i yeah. could have cracked that at some point like early on the first thing i did to make her useful but i also get very fortunate Fish that he just right? spams ice attacks at shadow yeah yeah so the other thing that uh mike mike pointed out in the chat is using reflect oh, thank god so man. in the vanilla Ugh. game you can use reflect to very good success because magic master won't fucking start the wall change unless he is attacked by you the problem in worlds collide is we have this thing called ability scaling where the higher the level the boss is it'll change what spells they actually cast so magi master may cast spells that aren't reflectable so Should your party is just gonna Should, die <laughs> right instead of casting bolt three he might do bolt edge right yeah and and throwing that skein at you you can't reflect it so that sort of strategy doesn't work in, in Worlds Collide as well as does in the vanilla game. It does make sense, yeah. It's, it's something, it's a place I need to actually, like, get those, like, have that strategy in the back pocket to know it if I need it. I'm gonna give Mod the snow. Yeah, I mean, it might work for a couple of turns or every once in a while, right? Yeah, but yeah. If he casts like absolute like, zero geez, instead of ice three, then else. you're screwed. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a tough <laughs> spot. It depends on where I'm so at, right? But yeah. Or just be lucky, Let's I guess. Relax. There we go. All right, so Yeti smash. There we go. Yeah, th th this could have been a disaster. This party's not very good. Yeah. You, uh, again, you know. So with party composition, I tend to try and say, well. Each person in each one of the parties has to have something that can deal with a disaster. Sure. And a disaster is, you know, a Magi Master or a goddess, right? So trying to think about that even long before you have your requirements, right? Because mm -hmm. your party is going to be set before you get your KT requirements most of the time. So you could also talk through it and think through it while you're, you know, mindlessly killing your last dragon before you go into KT, right? What is my party going to look like? And yeah. in this case, we have Ultima to deal with, you know, a Magic Master. So I don't know if Saban knows it or not. Maybe that's something that you would need uh, to consider before doing the dragon fight, actually. Um, I, yeah, I think I need... I didn't actually give Saban 
like I, I considered him done pretty early yeah. and he was not done like that was not he needed he needs something else i think he has like ice three and like nothing else which yeah, is good that's fine maybe he does yeah ice three is fine because he also has fire two and bolt two right so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. crank juicing his magic power at the point that we had him was the right thing to do because then you could turn some of those bolt beams into you know bolt two and a half or bolt three almost right yeah, especially if I'm hitting weaknesses is the the idea, but oh, okay. This is a fairly well, kind. Is, it's funny because like once I died to that magic master, uh, I start to scramble and like I, I checked all of my equipment a lot. Like I I just look through a lot of things that I probably didn't need to this late. Yeah, well uh, it's fine. You you should do it at some point. <laughs> yeah, I just felt like I I made some adjustments and then I made like sure several problems. more uh, like small adjustments of going in and out of the menu after that yeah so as far as part back to the party composition conversation right so ultima would be what shadow could do so shadow could sort of be in a party on his own kind of thing or with the party of two you know if yeah. you put shadow and sabin together for instance then sabin is sort of covered from disaster the fixed dice kind of also is uh, is pretty bulletproof in terms of that plan. So Setzer can kind of be I on his own. Have that and I'm not quite sure what Mog has to be solo. Yeah, I also came I don't in know if he could have used the fixed right dice. The right, 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 it's uh, one of those I, things uh, where I think that is something we'd have to check before going into that fight, is who can I use the I fixed agree. dice. Because then you could, you know, do Someone what you did is just hot swap the fixed the dice onto somebody in order to for them to be by themselves too, to right? Yeah, and then that's, that's yeah. your three lanes is to have something you, in each lane have a party member that can deal with disaster. And sometimes you don't have that, and you're like, well, I guess we'll just pray here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and those are the those are the rough seeds. But it's like the sometimes it's like. I think it's, I, I did not think about it that way where like, I thought about just like overall strength, where like mm -hmm. recently I've just been putting like character one on the left, character two on the right, and then characters three and four, my two worst characters in the middle. Mm -hmm. Cause like they can actually like team up and beat a boss, but right. maybe it, it, it might be better to think about what exactly they have as abilities to, to beat the worst possible scenario. Yeah, so that's, that's what I usually do is, you know, what is my, what is my disaster waiting to happen it inside is. of KT. So it's a Magi Master. It's a bad placed goddess Hello. for if I'm using Mog, Who's right? Um, so. All huh. right, so for Kefka here, Realm we have there. Siren yeah. and instant death and life three for Calmness. So we're sort of covered in that sense, right? So these are the things that I'm making sure of. And after I defeat like the statue boss, that is when I usually equip my espers that i'm taking into the final fight here yeah um which i noticed that you did as well which is good uh in terms of kefka the person that you put in the fourth position goes first on turn two three and four or tiers two three and four so i usually put my fourth you know number four person as somebody who either has mute or somebody who has instant death or somebody that can deal with tier three right away in one shot, right? Yeah. Deal with girl. Yeah. So that's sort of just something to remember as you're doing what is your party. And the first thing you do in the Kafka fight is you use slot. Why? Why are we using uh, slot? What are we doing? I <laughs> I think I was so I don't know why. I don't know I think I was so afraid of um of running out of MP for the top. I thought I had enough firepower to like single target these things down, but mm -hmm. I probably the best people to Same. Ultima are tier one and tier two, so it's like I yeah. don't. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm. I'm already worried about. The... And then I just like. I think I had some mistakes. I think I just do it here. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because I think you have Osmos, which will heal your MP. So the thing is, yeah. you. So with Shadow, you put on earring and gold hairpin, right? And the gold hairpin is to make him cast Ultima at the expense of more damage with the second earring. So if you're not using Ultima, you're effectively nerfing yourself with every other attack because you don't have yeah. that second earring Jesus. on. So you should be just doing Ultima every single turn if you decide, I want earring and gold hairpin versus earring and earring. Does that kind of make sense? That does make sense. Yeah, yeah. If like, I'm not doing it, I'm wasting time. I, I'm also like, I think the top guy is dead, but this looks like terrifying. 
to me? Yeah, he's dead. Okay, good. Because, like, I have been killed by Quake too many times. Or just, like, a random Meteo if he scaled up high enough. So yeah. it's, like... <laughs> yeah, I so... think I get... I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. No, so I think I think about these things too much, probably. Where, like, it's... Like, I should have just, like, Ultima, Ultima, and then, like, cleared oh, the long arm. Damage. And then I should have been, like... Just a couple physical... Mm -hmm. A couple single targets on the head would have been fine. Yeah. So, I also like starting Life 3 early. Um, you have Mute, so you can get rid of Magic. The only thing I would be worried about is if he counters with Dispel, you might have to reapply your Life 3 again on Tier 3. But mm -hmm. doing it now is way better than juggling the mechanics of Tier 3 and having to worry about casting Life 3 on your party. So for me, it's just too much going on. And... I don't know if you feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, so like I think I try to do this and balance this, but I I get pretty like I don't know, like life free just feels like such a time sink, and I I, I like my problem is that when I'm doing I'm feeling very pressured. I feel like I'm losing time here mm -hmm. when I really really I'm just being methodical about it, which I should be because right. it can get really bad really quickly, right? I mean, you could just not use Life 3 and say, well, if Calmus comes out and hits two of my characters, can I make it through Final Kafka? Mm -hmm. Right? That's a that's a decision you could make, and you could say, well, I'm not going to bother wasting time casting Life 3 on my party, because I could win with any two characters for Kafka. Right. I mean now, I don't think that's the case with your current party. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, me neither. Like, what uh, happens if it's Saban and Setzer left at the end? You're in, you're in trouble. Right, because Setzer is just doing dice, which is RNG dependent, and Saban doesn't have Ultima or really a way to to crack through that much damage. So that's why I'm fine with fine. doing Life Three here. And this is rather annoying that you don't have fire damage to clear out stuff. But the good news yeah. is Tiger does have attacks that will be fire based. That's okay. You're, you're, that's uh, that's what happens later on. You're generally uh, right. The really the thing that really terrifies me is like so I think someone said like I kill magic first sometimes or or after I kill magic I guess which would be you could do tiger first always because oh, tiger could also just like zombie shadow and shadow could just ultima my team and just kill everybody. Yeah. Which I've had which I've had happen. So. Yeah. Or you know zombie the fixed dice user and you're in a whole, whole world of hurt. <laughs> Yeah, there is no like now that you say it, there I have slots way too many times. Yeah. Like I don't and know. And now what... and now you're using Ragnarok, which is yeah. which you're in the I... back row, which is gonna do half the damage. And again, you have your shadow set up with an earrings and a gold hairpin. Golden. Right? So the only thing you should be doing every time is just spam Ultima, and when you run out of MP, sure you'll waste a turn with Osmos. But that's what your shadow is. That's his build is cast Ultima over and over again until I can't anymore. Well, I'll, I'm not entirely sure I know that I have Osmos on him. <laughs> well, like, that, that's... I, I think I find... Also, I use it so... Like, why do I use it at 204 magic right here when I could just use Ice 3? Like, I, but like that I, I, it looks like I figured it out right there <laughs> that I had Osmos. <laughs> Like, we are all in real time watching me realize that I have spells. So that's, it's like... That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's... This game is a lot... There's a lot of brain power that goes to this game. And three, it's one of the reasons why I like playing it is because instead of mechanical raw skill like a game like, you know, Super Metroid Rando does, this is a lot of game knowledge and thinking and planning and plotting. But there's also a lot to think about. And it's understandable if you're like, well, I missed this. It's like, yeah, it happens. We miss stuff. <laughs> yeah. This is like, it's just like funny to watch back. It's like, it's like, I'm thinking like, oh yeah, I'm going to spam ultimate here. And I'm just like watching myself use slots. It's like, oh, come on, man. You're better than this. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with, you know, Saban using these beams. Use ice three. It does way more damage than your beams would be doing. Yeah. I, I, I'm also rules. might be in the camp that he might not actually have ice three. How long it takes yeah. to Yeah. Well, that's a mistake. He should have learned. Yeah. Uh, oh, he should have ha I had it forever. I've had that that Esper for a thousand years. Yeah. Oh, he does have Ice Three. I'm just a clown. Yeah. I think. You, what we're doing. I think you put it on him before the dragon, or at yeah, least you should have. But um, so Mark pointing out in the chat, you could also stop hit if your physical defense is lacking. Uh, 
to me, that's sort of, I find it to be a waste of time. Because if one physical attack is going to knock your party owl out of whack, then you're in all sorts of trouble. To me, it's just a waste of a turn. Because ten hits will still come out no matter what. But stopping will only just stop one physical attack. Now, I can understand if it's the one physical attack in tandem with magic gets a turn and tools gets a turn and tiger gets a turn but for me hit is not something i'm worried about i'm worried about you know magic and tiger way more i should have gotten up here way faster the other two that's like 160 mm -hmm. but like i wish i was doing more damage all right so now we notice that saban was the one that got dispelled on the last turn so he needs to have life three reapplied um so we'll do that at some mean. point during this um, we can talk about this tier now, and I can go over the battle script in gory detail after we watch this if you really want to. But, uh, I just get, yeah. But go essentially, um, we need to get sleep to right before 10,000 HP, and then we need to be weary yeah. of um, spamming, uh, of, common, train and... of, of spamming stuff, right? Because yeah. He'll come out. So what I usually do, you can count damage if you really want to. For me, I can't calculate damage that fast, right? So for me, I have to just go ahead and react to what sleep does, and I find that that works most of the time. Uh, uh, I have getting done a lot more work on this fight than I have on anything else. I think, and I count damage. I have a calculator on my counter now for this fight in particular i i do the um i do kafka four by feel but i do this fight by like by like by need to know damage, yeah. yeah just about yeah it's like because it's so terrible it's like the one like i don't know this is probably where i've lost most of my runs trying to fight kafka right so but this team is like like this proc is a little weird it probably messes my timing up right yeah. and then i I don't know, there's Cure 3 out of nowhere. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing here. Alright, let's get this. Oh, he's got a lot, huh? He's the... Yeah. Let's go back to this here. Put this guy in here. I'm sorry for your eyes. I had I had dark mode on Google Docs, but you're, you're stuck with... You're stuck with this. I think he... I'm not sure if he uses train or... Yeah, he's like... My my dice do no damage, and... Yeah, so now train comes out, right? So let's take a look. I'm just going to pause it here, and we're going to go over the battle script real real fast for a hot second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. this is... You could find this in the Worlds Collide wiki, right? So under wiki, if you go over to guides, and if you scroll down, this is right here, monster scripts, right? So if you ever want to come back to this, it has the scripts for all the, the bosses in the game. Now, most of the bosses, since we use scaling, the scripts don't actually apply. But for Final Kefka, it's not scaled, so they do their vanilla battle scripts, which is kind of what you see here, right? So for Sleep, the first turn he does W, Wind, or Merton, or nothing. And then the second turn he does Battle or Condemned, and there's two chances that he does battle and one chance he uses condemned and he just goes back and forth between these two things right for a while uh, odd turns he'll do w and merton or nothing even turns to do battle or condemned until he gets underneath this threshold right and right then he'll use medio on every single turn um he also has this counter attack phase with less than 10,000 HP. If the monster has been attacked, he could do Medio, or he could do Train, or he could do nothing. So what you're seeing right here is him come out with Train. So this is a counter attack, and we now know that Sleep has less than 10,000 HP. So we have yes. to do about 10,000 damage to push him over to, you know, this, this Calmness, where he does it once, and then he has a one-third chance of doing it a second time. Yeah. So that's sort of how the the battle script for for this mm -hmm. boss goes, right? Um, so now that we've seen train, the thing we need to do is we need to wait to see if sleep does his actual turn with the medio, right? And if he does, we may need to 
patch herself up and dust herself off and try again. <laughs> but we right. now need to do more than 10,000 damage or about 10,000 damage to him. On your team, what is the attack that's going to do it for you? It's all. It's Ultima is the cast that's going to happen. Right. So the thing is, I, you 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 got hit with train, right? So that means well, you can't to... use Ultima. So the thing to do here is you have to echo screen shadow, and then use Ultima as quickly as you possibly can. Here comes the yep. Medio. So that's Sleep's turn. So he's not going to cast Medio again until you attack him. So you have a little bit of time here. So you decide, well, we're just going to do Ultima anyway and not heal. So the thing is, with your party's HP levels, right? If we go back and look here. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is before the Meteo. Mm -hmm. And here is after the Meteo. So you'll see how much damage Meteo does. It does about 1,400 or so to your party. right? It does a little less to people who have more armor but usually it's around 1500 look at the hp of your of three of your characters right uh oh, mm -hmm. i'm pointing on the pointer to the wrong thing so yeah. uh, what i probably would have done is i would have done a quick heal here but i understand like you would then have to put an echo screen onto somebody else and then heal and then use ultima and that risks um sleep getting a medio off anyway and it's more time so I'm fine with you just saying, well, I'm pretty sure Ultima will get me there. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I think it's only doing around 7,000 damage. So you better be sure that you've done enough if you're if you're counting damage kind of thing, right? So. Mm -hmm. And there it is, Quad Nines, and yeah. here comes Calmness, and you're good to go. Yeah, so it did 7,000, I think, when it was split, right? So... I think i'm not sure it's like yeah, so my, my problem yeah. is the thing the it thing did, i thought it, about it, the, you're right it did seven thousand when it was split you're absolutely the, right the, the thing i think about healing though there is like it's probably not gonna because like he he either opens up with something um, like gonna he's gonna fall really in one because i don't think i'm gonna be able to push thirty thousand here because, yeah. so it felt like I'm healing off. i might be able to echo I'm screen sets echo or screen here instead of later Maybe th this is also probably me hindsight. Me, I probably don't know about the thirty thousand threshold at the time of the person watching this video. Right, right, right. So, yeah, yeah, so essentially, you know, so we'll go over Kafka's battle script real fast. I gotta stop the timer. My bad. Okay. So real quick, for Kafka, he does fall. So this is the first turn, right? He does fall in one, and then he actually does a bunch of different spells before he goes back to fall in one again. So if you you know, if you're ever in that instance where I talked about where you're like, screw it, I'm just going to use two characters to kill Kafka, you might need to know about this a little bit more. But the bi the biggest thing you need to know is that Fallen One comes out unless we get to this threshold here, which oops, is off the screen. If the target has less than or equal to 32k HP, right, yeah. then he'll do the Goner charge up instead. And when he's done with Goner... He could do Havoc Wing on the first turn, or Train or Revenger, then Havoc Wing or Nothing or Nothing on the second turn, right? So Kafka will take two turns and then go back to Goner again after you get below that threshold. But yeah. if you know, as you said, you won't do 30,000 HP, you got to be ready to heal up with Fallen One, which we've got a Mega Elixir from that, that Magi Master fight, so we're at least good in that particular aspect. So... Deal as much damage as you can here. You'll get Fallen One, and then somebody will go ahead and heal your party. Now, yeah. for Setzer, I think on this fight you used some eye drops on Setzer, and then I, I don't know if you did it on Mog as well. So one thing to know about the Illumina and the Fixed Dice is that they will always hit the target, even if you have the Dark status or... Um, even if that enemy has really high physical evade. So it's always going to hit. So you don't actually need the eye drops for either Mog or Setzer here. You just need the echo screens for Shadow and Sabin if they're going to be casting magic. So that's just a, a thing to, to know. Good to know. All right, so here comes Kafka. 
We'll start the timer again. And we'll see how you do this. So yeah, echo screen on Saban is fine. As I mentioned, yeah, so Setzer doesn't need an eye drop. He's just gonna roll with his dice. Um, so Shadow using Osmos on this turn is probably a mistake, because again, right, let's just deal damage to him, because he cannot counterattack until Fallen One comes out. So now oh. that Fallen One has come out, we're gonna use um, our Mega Elixir here, and we're gonna attack him again. And Kefka will get in his counterattack phase. So his counterattacks are way down here. Um, so if he has less than this amount, he could use battle or hyperdrive or nothing as his counter. So that is the threshold that he has to be under in order to do counterattacks. So the first turn, you should just throw everything you got at him. Um, so he just did a battle there. So I don't know if that is a counterattack battle. Or if that is his second turn battle, right? Because this is his second turn, technically, after Fallen 1. But now that we've seen Hyperdrive, we now know what. That he's in his counter phase here, right? right? He's so... under 30,000 HP. So every time you attack him, he could counter with Battle or Hyperdrive. Things get really bad if he gets under 10,000 HP, because he could counter with Ultima, right? So this is the thing you have to be careful of. And here is the charge for Goner. So he can't counterattack during this phase. Now is the time to use all of your abilities here. And you should only have one party member that could probably survive it or tank it. So Mog is probably going to die, even though you just brought him back up from, from Goner. And you just basically need to pour in your yeah. damage here. And I think these two dice rolls from Setzer will do it. Hopefully. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... That was pretty fast. Yeah, 121 so 34. 121 34 was, I think your, it was 121 Yeah, your final time ish. So Yeah. That was that. So GG's on that one. Thanks. But yeah, so that Kafka fight was really good. Way better than um the, the Kafka fight in general was 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 good. Um There was a lot of yeah. other stuff, you know, before that that obviously we could go ahead and try and clean up based on the notes that I have here. Um, yeah. So I have like a good and a needs work section like overall of what I thought you did well, what I think we need to work on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Sorry, these are all different sizes and shapes. Okay. That's okay. So early game buying stuff, taking pre-progression with what your party had, setting up your espers before doing the dragon fight not you know making sure you know your stuff knowing you know when to use rods and you change some strategies on the fly to deal with bosses which is good buying too many consumables uh yeah, it's, yeah. The, the the end of the seed routing i thought was not great uh it ended up working out in your favor because you got skip right but right it, you could have probably been in Kafka's tower like 10 minutes faster and that yes. would have saved you time overall so that's just yeah. one of those things to keep I, in mind here I, I agree and i thank you for like for all that because I, I it feels like the, the beginning of my seed that like the first 30 or minutes or so was like fairly like concise yeah and then like once I started, once the routing started to get a little messy, it just like it bleeds into the rest of the game too. So it's like I'm just like, flop, like check, like doing the search the skies. It's like I do I need to be doing that? Like probably not. Like and then also now knowing that I can um, like a, a different way to tackle the Moogle defense like situation mm -hmm. and peaking using more peak checks to my advantage. Like because like that's gonna the, using the peak checks effectively is gonna gain more time than me like. Oh, I'll hit Mount Colts because it's over here, right? Like that's not. It's like a it's a much better way to chip time off. So I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. That's, I mean, and again, people I think have different routing philosophies. There are people that say, let's go do the fastest checks, no matter what they are, and that's that's fine if you draw that line in the sand. But you also know that you may be leaving some time on the table because you're doing more checks than you should be. Which mm -hmm. is maybe not a bad thing with the check skip for 
for Ultras League, right? So that's that's a viable strategy. Another one is to do all of the checks that are not peekable first and then do the peekables at the end. So that this mm -hmm. way you sort of say, well, I have six characters now. What are the checks that are Esper item only or peekable? Let's just go do those and we'll forget about the character Esper item checks, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll just completely forget about those. And then there's yeah. also the what is near me, like the what is clustered in the same area as I am. And that, to me, is the one that I tend not to go towards, because, yes, flying around the airship more is going to make you lose time overall, but I think the attributes of the check or the speed of the check is way more important than, oh, I'm going to lose three seconds by changing worlds, and then I'm going to lose five more seconds by flying all the way across the map. Right. Yeah, it's like a, that's like a third tiebreaker, almost like a all things being equal with these two checks, which one's closer? Yeah, but like right. it shouldn't be a driving factor. Yeah, obviously okay. there like there are some that kind of lend themselves well, right? There's Imperial Camp and Baron Falls. So you do Imperial Camp, Baron Falls is literally right there, and you get the heal before that check. So all the fighting that you just did in Imperial <laughs> Camp doesn't matter. You don't need to use your sleeping bags or tents or whatever because you're going to get healed right before that. Right, mm -hmm. so there are some of those that that just make total sense, you know. Right. Or yeah. if you are looking for, let's say, two espers, right, go to Realms Check in Alzer's Mansion because you can get an esper there, and then you could also peek in the auction house and get an esper there. So it has more value than if you need characters, right? Maybe Alzer's Mansion is not the place to go because the auction house check is not going to get you a character. And Alzer's Mansion, you can't really peek until you're all the way at the end of it. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. So that makes sense. And you have to reset out of it anyways because you can't just look at it. So, yeah. 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 That's all really good information. Um, all right. So with that all in mind, I know I typed up like a, a comprehensive thing of my thoughts, which is usually what I do for either VOD reviews or mentor sessions. I'll ask, mm -hmm. hey... Where do you think you need work and you know give me a video that i could review so we could at least have a baseline to talk about so in the beginner's house or beginner's hideout what is it called here yes beginner's house <laughs> there is a yeah. there is a pinned uh set of posts to submit a vod or to sign up for some live mentor session sessions and you could sort of get this fun treatment too yay yeah that was excellent. I really, really do appreciate it. I learned a lot, and hopefully, I'm excited to like do some stuff and and, and add more things to my thinking load as I'm <laughs> playing. But it, it'll be it'll be good to to kind of the more information, the better, and then I can kind of sift through it as I have it. So thank you so much. Yeah. Well, some of these things hopefully are made you designed to stop thinking so much too, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, I've got my four party members. I'm done looting. I'm done shopping. I have my builds now, right? Because that's essentially what we're doing is we're trying to create four builds for taking on the final boss. And a build is very nebulous. It could be, I have an Illumina, that's one build. I have Ice 3, that's another build, you know? So it's it's kind of hard to define those terms somewhat. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, it's very cool. Um, so yes, congratulations on being promoted up to Elixir from Potion this season. Um, Thanks. Just as some, you know, meta game advice. The one thing that I noticed when going, I, I I started off in Elixir actually, like with season one, and I didn't get out of it until last season with Mega Elixir. But one thing I did notice, you know, watching Potion versus watching Elixir, is that with Elixir, if you make like mistakes, they're going to cost you a lot more when you run up against Elixir runners. You know where times are going to be very much you know optimized almost all the way so some of the things like you know um oh i, I put the wrong party against Magi master you will probably be in fourth or fifth place versus like in potion or maybe even in tonic you can get away with having a mistake or two and still be in first place right so that's yeah. one thing to keep in mind is if you cut down on just the small like mistakes you'll be more consistently in the upper half of things right 
if they're one of the reasons I put this one forward was because so I, I won my league this week mm -hmm. like I, I by by a pretty good amount yeah and I was like this felt good I was like I was like the time was good for the peep for like my potion but like it felt like the the the, the end half of this felt messy and mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out how to fix it so I was like I don't know what I don't know so I was like let me put this one forward and see like even though I did well, like I'm gonna need to be better than this. Like I could have been faster and, and more concise. So like what you told me about kind of how to clean the end game up and what I should be thinking about to get to the end game, mm -hmm. like really, really helps. So I really do appreciate it. Yeah, I think also part of it will be not everybody's gonna find the Illumina on the Phantom Train that you found, right? 100, yeah, uh, like I, I, that was the thing. Getting, is like, getting I was like, bailed out by some lucky items here. I don't like getting bailed out. Like that's the thing is like it it felt dirty, like because I, I my, my my overall goal always is to to lower my average times, not like spike a good time. Right. So it's right. like if, if all of my seeds are pretty good, then like I, when I find the Illumina like that, it's gonna be all oh, awesome. I'm gonna be able to really press this advantage. <laughs> but if I don't, then I'm still gonna be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure I would have been fine here if I did not get bailed out. So. Right. That's uh. Um, With some different of, routing, uh, maybe. Right. Yeah, like yeah, I like, said, if if you if at the point that you're like, well, Setzer is useless, uh, let me go do Mog's checks because a character to replace Setzer is usually at the most recent characters. You mm. would have gotten Realm, and Realm would have went in, and the magic would have been better with Realm than it would have been with either Shadow or Saban, kind of thing, right? So it would have, your party would have looked a little different. Yeah, like I would have like some of the builds I have here, I I kind of brute forced, and I would not have had to brute force them if I had routed a little more efficiently. Like like the, some of the th the builds I'm using like are much better on Realm. Like I invested a lot into Sabin, and he's still not very good here. So it's like it would have been better if I just routed it a little uh, a little more efficiently. And these when you route well, it seems to come together nicely, generally. Yeah. So sometimes, but, and then sometimes yeah. you just like. Well, the seed sucks, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, but then it sucks for everyone, right? So it's that's like, true. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's it was good. I really needed like the like the thing that really helped me a lot here is that like, um, I look at the mod check and I said I always do it this way. I go up and then I come back down, and you're like, mm. well, you don't have to do it that way. Right. So it helps me get out get out of that mindset. So I, I appreciate or just or just think about another way to do things. So I think. Yeah. yeah. Use the peekable checks to your advantage. Yeah. And yeah. I, I admit I probably lean too hard into it. Like like you said, hey, Daryl's tomb is not really peekable. You're all the way, all the way through it already, right? If you reset out of there, you're basically just like wasting time. And you're like, yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's really not a peekable check unless you, yeah. Because you don't need the levels or whatever. Like sometimes like the, uh, the killing the boss helps, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, but the time it takes you to reset out and keep going versus the amount of levels you'll gain and the amount of it we're trying constantly to weigh how much time do i put into this to save time later on right that's right. that's the push and pull is i'm gonna waste two minutes doing this is it gonna make my seed more than two minutes faster right and and that's that's something i'm it's very difficult for me to, to process but as i get doing more i'll probably get better at it yeah Awesome. Well, cool. Right, well, that so, I th so that I think will do it for this uh, edition. I think tomorrow we are planning on doing another sort of uh, playthrough where I think both me and Drinks Glue are going to race one of the Moogle's first tournament flags and be on commentary together to uh, not only smack talk one another as we're doing our race, but uh, <laughs> to kind of do this sort of, you know, mentoring advice thing. So be on the lookout for that tomorrow um i think we're oh no not tomorrow i'm sorry um sunday right because mm. today's friday yes yeah so sunday friday. 8 p.m eastern we'll probably get that done for you so hopefully awesome. you guys will join us then cool well, thank you so much again i appreciate it really i do yeah so thanks langsian for allowing us to critique your work here and obviously you know we are trying to make one another better, which is great, but it always is something to put yourself out there. So I appreciate you putting yourself out there because I know not everybody would would want to do it. 
and hopefully this will encourage other people to put themselves out there as well because you'll learn stuff and even me who is a mentor is also learning stuff like yeah maybe uh maybe maybe daryl's tomb isn't all that peekable after all <laughs> ah, but it's a that's how we all get better right learn as much as we possibly can yeah for sure all right so thank you so much everybody thanks again langston and uh we'll catch you on the next one see you later now thanks thank you bye, -bye.